Your body's only healthy when your hormones are balanced. Hormones are the key to not just restoring your health to the thermostate, but also to maintaining it and improving it over time. Your endocrine system is a complex framework of feedback loops, natural compensation mechanisms, with hormones either supporting or suppressing one another. When your stress hormones are chronically high, your protective hormones are low, and vice versa. While hormones might seem complex, they're in fact quite simple to manipulate. You manipulate them right now all the time without even knowing it. All day long with every decision you make, you're constantly either supporting your protective hormones or your stress hormones. It's time to become aware of which actions are actually helping you or hurting you. It's time to think again. These differences of appearance are influenced by involved chemical processes within our body. Seven key hormones is out of whack. We can balance them with our four. These are called hormones, and they are discharged directly into the bloodstream. Now in your mind's eye, picture a rock stuck in a funnel. Now envision trying to pour some water into the top of that funnel. With very little water able to get around the crevices of that rock, the water starts building up to the top of the funnel, eventually overflowing. If you dump the water out, then try a different liquid or maybe something else like a powder, the same thing will happen. Little if any will get through the funnel, it's all being blocked. That's what my brain tumor was doing to me 10 years ago, only it was acting like this rock in a funnel inside my pituitary gland, the control center for my endocrine system. The pituitary communicates with and receives feedback from vital organs like your thyroid gland, adrenals, liver, and reproductive organs. When it's not functioning properly, like in my case, everything starts to go horribly wrong. None of these key organs can get the signaling or the feedback that they need to keep your body healthy. When I finally found the tumor on an MRI, I started rifling through my textbooks to find any information I could on how to help myself get out of this mess without using surgery or drugs. Cracking open William's textbook of endocrinology, it became evident that my problem wasn't only about the hypothalamus not being able to get the right input through my pituitary out to the body, but none of these other glands could send the right feedback back through the pituitary properly either. I quickly realized that everything in your endocrine system functions on feedback loops. It's actually cyclical, not linear. Every medical illustration in the textbooks actually demonstrates you'll see these cyclical arrows drawn out between all the major key organs in the body and the pituitary is right in the middle of it. Before that point, I had very little understanding that the body was so systemically integrated. It's just one big system and all the glands inside of it communicate with one another. And they do so with hormones. These hormone loops help the glands regulate one another to stay in a state of balance. All my doctors were specialists, only viewing the body through one lens, their specialty. They seem to all think of the body as a compartmentalized jigsaw puzzle focusing on just one area without any sense of what the big picture really was. It reminded me a lot of the ancient parable of the three blind men and the elephant. The Indian story about three blind men coming upon an elephant. They all touch different parts of the elephant and describe what it is to one another. Having different opinions they're convinced are the truth, they start to fight with one another over which one is actually telling the truth. None of them can see the big picture, the whole elephant. Once I realized that the body is really just a whole system and that the hormone feedback loops were the key to improving my health naturally, everything changed. I felt completely empowered. I knew that if I could just signal enough of the positive feedback back into my brain while eliminating the negative feedback sources, that it would eventually override that damn rock in my funnel and I could actually make some progress. And it took a lot of effort, research, lifestyle changes, and most of all, consistency, but I did just that. The easiest way to think about hormones is to see them as chemical messengers. Think of a paper boy riding around the neighborhood on his bicycle, bringing newspapers to everyone's house. Endocrine hormones are like the bicycle riding paper boy riding along the bloodstream to deliver the message they were sent for by entering the front door of a receptor site on the surface of a target cell. Paracrine hormones are similar, but they stay closer to home, more like if you were walking over to your next door neighbor's house to give them a tray of cookies as a Christmas gift. Some hormones have a long distance job to accomplish, but others stay local, usually just signaling to adjacent cells. Now here's the really cool thing. Picture yourself going online to a shopping website like Amazon. Maybe you need to order some cleaning supplies regularly to your home, so you pay to subscribe to some different sprays, soaps, and paper towels to be delivered to your house every month. Amazon processes the order, packages the products in their warehouse, and sends out a delivery van to bring them to your house, possibly over hundreds of miles. A few months from now, you realize that you overestimated how many cleaning supplies you needed, so now you have a surplus. Enough soap stockpiled in your storage closet to last you another few months. You don't need to reorder anymore for a while. Now you go back to Amazon and pause your subscription. You just participated in a tangible feedback loop. By starting a subscription, you told Amazon that you needed soap. So they produced and delivered the products to you. 
By later pausing your subscription, you told Amazon to stop sending you so much soap. Your endocrine organs work in the exact same way. It's super easy to understand. Let's say a couple months later, you start running out of soap again. You've been cleaning a lot, but now it's time to turn back on your subscription and restock your supplies. You go to Amazon's website, you log into your account, and then you see a message and it says, we're sorry, but due to manufacturing and supplier issues, we no longer carry cleaning supplies. Now you have to go find them somewhere else, maybe drive to the local store. It's way less convenient and more expensive, not to mention it's costing you additional gas money and time out of your day. To make things worse, when you get to your local store, they don't have all the exact cleaning supplies you need. You'll just have to make do. You don't want your house to turn into a disgusting cesspit after all. After months of this, you make your routine trip to the local store and walk up to an empty shelf. No cleaning supplies. Everyone else in your town was facing the same problem, so eventually the store ran out of cleaning supplies and the clerk tells you there won't be any more back in stock for a few weeks. As you walk out the door, you see a newspaper on the stand with a headline reading, Nationwide Soap Shortage. Major cleaning chemical manufacturers go bankrupt. In this case, your feedback loop was noticeably disturbed. You needed more supplies, but the most convenient, efficient, and affordable supplier could no longer give you what you needed. You had to make an additional effort to find subpar resources to get the original job done. Then, your subpar supplier ran out of supplies. You realize this is a much bigger issue than you originally thought. There's a systemic nationwide shortage of the raw materials needed to make cleaning supplies. Now what are you supposed to do to keep your home clean? And while this is merely just a metaphorical demonstration, it's actually quite similar to hormone production in your body. Uh, your body runs into issues all the time with production and raw material supply problems. To be produced properly, hormones need raw materials. This is why we see rapid drops in some hormones production when the body is deficient in vitamins, minerals, and amino acids. Or why we see overproduction of certain hormones when too much raw material is flooded into the system without the proper regulation from other hormonal feedback, for example, in cases of estrogen excess with too much exposure to environmental estrogenics and unbalanced methionine and tryptophan levels. Another common situation with hormone imbalance occurs when an organ in the feedback loop system is not functioning properly. One easy example is when your liver is overproducing the protein SHBG, or sex hormone binding globulin, which can occur for a range of different reasons. With too much SHBG in your blood, your sex hormones like testosterone can become overbound and cannot get through the front door of the receptor sites that they need to enter. This would be akin to someone walking up to your front door and stealing the Amazon box full of cleaning supplies right off your porch. Now that we have a basic grasp on the fundamentals behind feedback loops and how they work within your body, let's take a look at the two different classes of hormones that you need to focus on for natural hormonal balance. Those are protective hormones and stress hormones. A fun and metaphorically interesting way to think about the differences between the classes of your body's protective hormones and stress hormones is to make them analogous to the ancient concept of angels and demons, respectively. In philosophical considerations of good and evil, it's apparent that one cannot exist without the other. If someone has truly no understanding of what is good, then how can they know what is evil? The definitions of these words as concepts rely on one another to be properly understood. Inside your body, your protective hormones and your stress hormones exist to balance each other out, to run a system of checks and balances in order to maintain homeostasis. Now, this is why measuring isolated hormone levels in the blood in itself doesn't give us a whole lot in terms of useful data until we actually compare hormones against each other in a ratio. For example, the testosterone to cortisol ratio or the T to C ratio is a really useful measure in research, uh, especially with respects to athletic performance, strength, power, endurance, and male reproductive health. All hormones are needed for your body to be healthy. However, you start to experience serious health issues when the balance is skewed heavily in favor of stress hormones, which happens to be the case for most people in our modern environment. Physical and psychological stress alongside unprecedented exposure to environmental estrogenic chemicals is at an all-time high right now when compared to any other time in human history. And epidemic level hormonal health issues have been rising rapidly for many decades now, including thyroid dysfunction, sexual dysfunction, hypertension, gut diseases, and many more. The average person is sadly completely unaware of the important role that hormones are playing in their health problems. Now, most people don't know how to increase their protective hormone levels safely and naturally to actually help overcome the rampant overproduction of stress hormones in their body. Protective hormones are in low supply and I'm gonna show you how to naturally and safely increase them. There are many different hormones constantly working inside your body. They are made up in different ways structurally. Some of them are produced from amino acids known as amino acid-derived hormones, such as dopamine, epinephrine, melatonin, norepinephrine, T3, and T4. 
Others are referred to as eicosanoid hormones, a class of paracrine hormones that signal locally to neighboring cells and synthesized as a result of PUFA oxidation. Examples are prostaglandins, leukotrienes, prostacyclin, and thromboxane. Another class containing a large variety of hormones is the peptide hormones, like LH, FSH, TSH, adiponectin, HCG, GnRH, HGH, leptin, IGF, and many more, which are structurally composed of peptides or protein molecules. And finally, we have the steroid hormones, many of which you may be familiar with, such as testosterone, DHT, estradiol, cortisol, DHEA, progesterone, and aldosterone. Protective hormones are defined as those that at naturally high and healthy levels within your body are able to fuel the vital biological processes that help you to thrive. Things like deeper sleep, better reproductive function, a higher metabolism and better functioning thyroid gland, and even executive cognitive functioning. Now at healthy levels, protective hormones can effectively protect against excess stress hormone levels. And what you're gonna feel is you're gonna feel more energetic, you're gonna sleep better, your reproductive health is gonna be amazing and your bedroom performance can be amazing. And you're gonna be able to maintain a naturally lean and healthy body quite easily. While there are a lot of different protective hormones, the ones we're gonna focus on optimizing are thyroid hormones T3 and T4, dopamine, testosterone, DHT, progesterone, LH, FSH, and GnRH. Ultimately, increasing the production of these hormones revolves around taking actions to improve the functioning of three key organs, the pituitary, liver, and your thyroid gland. The most helpful thinking tool that I've been employing over the last few years is a concept known as leverage. What can I do right now that will get me most, if not all, of the results that I'm looking for? Average people get mediocre results because they don't think this way. Most people will chase too many rabbits at once, only to catch none. Exceptional people get excellent results by identifying one core focus, then relentlessly pursuing that one thing until they get it. If you pick the right thing to fixate on, it'll apply enough leverage to take care of everything else as a byproduct. And the beautiful thing about leverage thinking when it comes to protective hormone levels is that you do the same things over and over again to increase all of your protective hormone levels, which I'm about to show you shortly. Like everything in the body, stress hormones serve a specific purpose. For example, cortisol is absolutely needed for survival, rapidly rising in times of acute stress to trigger adrenaline and noradrenaline production to heighten your senses and physical response times in order to avoid getting hit by that speeding taxi as you step off the New York City sidewalk into the street. Acute rapid increases in stress hormones aren't necessarily a bad thing. They, they really help you stay alive, especially when you do something stupid. Unfortunately, for most of us, we're not dealing with just acute increases in stress hormones. We're dealing with chronically elevated levels of these stress hormones. The catabolic nature of stress hormones can have a catastrophic negative effect on your health when chronically elevated, quite literally destroying your body in a slow burn over decades. Stress hormones stay chronically elevated because of environmental input into your body, such as prolonged physical or psychological stress without adequate recovery periods, estrogenic influences from foods, plastics, and pesticides, and deficiencies that trigger unfavorable cascades, such as sodium deficiency causing your kidneys to activate the RAS pathway as a compensation mechanism. When these environmental inputs aren't properly balanced with the support of the protective hormones, which is almost always the case due to the oppositional nature of how hormones work, you start to initiate the slow burn, the downward spiral of physical degeneration. While there are a lot of different hormones involved in the human stress response, in the interest of pursuing leveraged thinking, we're gonna focus on improving the following, since this is gonna create the biggest positive impact in the shortest period of time. Estrogen, cortisol, adrenaline, and noradrenaline. Evolutionary programming has created an extremely efficient stress response system in your body known as the sympathetic nervous system. This can be a double-edged sword, however, in our modern world. In the presence of a stressor, the amygdala, which is considered to be the fear center of the brain, quickly signals to the hypothalamus to trigger a signaling cascade through the pituitary to the adrenal glands. This pathway is known as the HPA axis. The pituitary gland via the hormone ACTH, or adrenocorticotropic hormone, tells the adrenal glands to push down the gas pedal by pumping cortisol and adrenaline into the bloodstream, which acutely heightens your senses, increases blood pressure, and triggers the release of available glucose, then stored fatty acids into the blood for extra energy. Glucose being readily available in acute stress situations also happens to be in limited supply since it's needed for so many other important bodily functions. When cortisol is chronically elevated, glucose is quickly used up to fuel this survival mechanism and no longer available for important thriving processes like the brain's cognitive processes, reproductive processes, detoxification in the liver, and thyroid gland energy metabolism processes. All resources are distributed to survival. 
The problem is, chronic cortisol and adrenaline elevation inherently uses up preferred energy sources and requires the body to switch to a survival metabolism, dumping stored fatty acids into the bloodstream, which creates unfavorable metabolic byproducts on the cellular level, such as lactic acid, and lowers overall CO2 production in the body, which is needed for regenerative processes. In modern chronic stress scenarios, we're not actually trying to survive in the primal sense of the word, but your body doesn't know the difference. It's wired to be extremely efficient at facilitating the stress response. When your stress response is chronically engaged with its resources being used to survive, it creates a downward spiral of degeneration. The good news is that once you become aware of this, there are steps that you can take to stop it. The first step is to eliminate blockers, things that are causing the stress hormones to elevate in your body. And then the second step is to introduce activators into your body uh, that are gonna increase the natural protective hormone levels and help you balance everything out. In my first book, Master Your TI, I outlined a diagram for readers on how to think about optimizing their testosterone production naturally, which I called the masculine optimization pyramid. In designing this pyramid, it became obvious that the people needed an easy way to visually understand how to do this. And since its advent, hundreds of thousands of men have used this diagram to rebalance their hormones naturally. This pyramid framework doesn't just work for men, it actually works for women as well. And it's basically gonna help anybody to naturally improve their hormonal balance, namely decreasing their stress hormone levels while increasing the natural production of their protective hormones. I've redesigned the pyramid here for this purpose and it's called the Thermo Hormone Optimization Pyramid. The order of importance goes from bottom to top since you don't wanna build your health on a shaky foundation. Micronutrients are the key foundational element to rebalancing hormones. They're the raw materials your body needs to fuel every hormonal and metabolic process. When you're deficient in any vitamins, minerals, or amino acids, it throws your hormones out of whack quickly. Therefore, this needs to be the first thing that you focus on. Moving up the pyramid, nutrition becomes vitally important, mainly as a way to support your micronutrient levels, gut health, in order to absorb those micronutrients and facilitate proper neuronal signaling to the brain and provide your body with the right macronutrients to thrive. Nutrition is a very easy thing to manipulate. Simply eat foods that help your body function better and stop eating things that hurt your body. Next, we have lifestyle implications. Inside this middle part of the pyramid, you can include things like stress management techniques, sexual health practices, and eliminating exposure to estrogenic chemicals in your personal care products. After micronutrients, nutrition, and lifestyle are optimized, it's important to include proper exercise. Physical activities that skew the hormonal balance in your favor away from chronic cortisol activities such as endurance training and toward anabolic activities such as weight training and restorative activities such as walking or hiking. The human body needs to be in motion. Researchers have actually demonstrated that without physical movement, the body starts to show signs of pre-diabetes in as little as 48 hours. And finally, the least important, but still very useful top of the pyramid is strategic supplementation. A lot of people try to use supplements as a replacement or a shortcut to substitute in place of other levels of the pyramid. This typically doesn't serve them very well because the foundational levels of the pyramid are more profoundly impactful to your health. When your nutrition's poor, for example, supplementation can only help so much. It's at the top because it is most useful to either aid the other levels of the pyramid, for example, providing additional micronutrients to overcome deficiencies or using certain herbs for stress management, lifestyle adjustments, or to use as a final cherry on top in terms of helping to truly optimize your performance once you address everything else underneath it. Now, if you go step by step through this pyramid and all the different levels of it and you optimize each one, you're naturally going to be bringing your body back into a thermo state with higher protective hormone levels and lower stress hormone levels. Most people just don't get it when it comes to hormones. They take a Band-Aid at the first request from their doctor without taking natural steps that are quite easy to do in an organized fashion like within the thermo pyramid. When it comes to hormones and balancing your hormones naturally, I think it's time that we think again.